Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled, How I Almost Burnt Down My Family Home Making Rocket Fuel. And did I mention my father was a fireman? Now, the stuff I did growing up in uh, high school, this was typically in high school, uh, probably if I did this today, I would wind up in jail, juvie, under FBI, surveillance, something like that. But back then, things were a little bit looser, and I guess you could get away with uh, things a little more than you can today. Now, as a high school kid, I thought it'd be fun to make gunpowder. Gunpowder is fairly easy to make. And um, I had ideas, uh, you know, of making explosions, not destroying anything, just, just having fun making some ex explosions and things like that, just kind of playing around, you know. Now, the funny thing is, um, I could go to my local Oscal Drug in Iowa City and I could buy saltpeter, potassium nitrate, buy the pound jars. And also sulfur. It's kind of interesting. For a, a good while, um, I could go and buy a pound jar of saltpeter, buy some sulfur, uh, check it out, ride my bike home, and adding the other ingredient, charcoal, in the correct ratio, I could make gunpowder. Now, it's not as easy as, you know, it sounds or they make it seem. Uh, and, and if you look at, you know, what most people think of, of gunpowder, it's actually not the... Uh, the uh, potassium nitrate, sulfur, and carbon. It's, it's a little more complex compounds. And it's hard to make gunpowder that really does much more than, uh, at least for a kid doing it, than uh, just burns. Uh, gunpowder isn't horribly explosive, not like some of the, uh, the modern explosives, but eh, it's not too bad. And um, try as best as I could. Yeah, I never got the super explosions. I got some burning and stuff. And uh, what... Well, uh, one time I put it into a little uh, piece of copper pipe, a half inch piece of copper pipe, and I had a little hole in it, and I was heating it with a torch because I could get a nice flame out of it. And, well, that did work kind of too well. My, uh, I was leaning over it in the backyard with the torch, and my dad uh, told me it was time for lunch. And I uh, kind of set up uh, from being right over the top of the thing and said, okay, I'll be right in. And then it went boom. It ripped the uh, copper tube in half and went flying up past my forehead. And if I would have been bent over just a few seconds earlier, I would have probably given myself a frontal lobotomy. Now, I was known in the high school as somebody who could uh, provide, uh, let's call it special effects, if you would. And some friends of mine, they wanted to TP this kid's house, and they were had a kitchen sink they were going to place in the front yard. And they say, hey, can you make something that will give kind of a flash, you know, um, kind of lighten things up, you know, for fun? And I said, yeah, I can put something together. And I, I uh, made a compound that I think is uh, referred to as thermite. It's basically gunpowder and magnesium. See, the University of Iowa, where I um, uh, pelled around uh, to do uh, my science fair projects and that, they, uh, the shop uh, built satellites for uh, Dr. James Van Allen, and they machined the boxes out of solid pieces of magnesium. So there are a lot of shavings of magnesium. And... Uh, you know, they just gave me boxes full of them, and I'd take it home, and I'd make a little uh, ice volcano and start it on fire and throw snow on, and it'll erupt nice and bright. Probably burn a hole in my retina or that, but anyway, it was fun to play with, and, you know, <laughs> things were different back then. But, okay, so I had plenty of this magnesium, I mixed it up with gunpowder, and I gave them a uh, delay fuse, it's called uh, dethermalizing fuse, you use it on play gliders, and so I I hooked that up, gave him about a five-minute delay, and I said, okay, don't be too close. This should be pretty bright. And they came back the next day and said, oh, my gosh. He said, when that thing went on, the kid happened to be in the living room window because he had heard some noise, and they saw him jump back. He said, they were a block away, roughly, and it was like they were standing in daylight. They could see their shadows. And they said it lit up the area for four blocks. Yes, kind of a nice, bright explosion. Burning, not really so much of an explosion, but uh, it, it, got, uh, it got the kids' attention. Now, I shifted my interest to making rocket fuel. Uh, back in, uh, when I was growing up in, in the 50s, we didn't have the Estes rockets and the nice little ABCD engines and stuff like that. If you wanted to make a rocket, you had to make your own rocket fuel 
and you had to put it in a piece of pipe and you had to put some fins on it and you kind of hoped it didn't explode. Well, the rocket fuel ingredients were potassium nitrate and sugar. Uh, you mix those in a ratio of about three to one, I think it was, and it would give you a pretty nice burning bit of rocket fuel. And, uh, well, I was getting to the end of my potassium nitrate days because uh, pharmacists probably, when he noticed that people were buying pound jars of this stuff, got a little concerned. And he approached me and he says, uh, what do you need that for, son? What do you need a pound jar of saltpeter for? And I go, well, uh, I, we live on a farm and my dad sent me in to get this. He said we needed it for the animals or something like that. And the guy kind of looked at me and he gave me a small jar and he says, okay, take this. So I think, I think they were finally getting on to me. But the thing was, you mix this stuff up. I had a little uh, tin can that was uh, five inches wide and oh, about eight inches tall or something like that, like one of the V8 cans. And I'm mixing it up there on the stove. And uh, it makes kind of a, almost like a, a, a brittle, uh, you know, like a peanut brittle. Uh, type of thing when it when it cools and I, and I I had it nice and and flowing and I poured it into the rocket casing and uh, okay that's going well but as it cooled it started to shrink mm, I didn't like that well the instructions said don't ever reheat you know the rocket fuel well who pays attention to stuff like that as a kid so I put it on the stove there the little can and uh, I started heating it up. And it wasn't melting. So I turned the flame up a little more. It wasn't melting. Then all of a sudden, I saw a little wisp of smoke. And I go, uh-oh. And I stood back. Uh, my dad was about five feet away in the living room sitting there. And my mom was preparing. This was the, uh, Thanksgiving Day, by the way. She was preparing the turkey dinner and stuff. And this thing took off. And... I mean, it, you could see the red ring burning down the can. It burnt very quickly. It burnt very well. And it full, filled the house full of smoke. Now, it burnt so quickly that it didn't do more than kind of just singe the cabinet. So I was lucky nothing really start, started on fire. But the smoke came rolling out of all the windows. My dad opened up the house and the smoke, smoke comes pouring out and... Did I mention my dad was a fireman? They were firemen back then called that because there were no women. Now they're firefighters, of course. But um, the neighbors called the fire department because they saw this smoke just billowing out. So, you know, that's the nice thing. Your uh, friends and coworkers pull up to your house that has smoke coming out. And, oh, my gosh, I was no, I was in trouble. I picked up all the jars of chemicals and stuff, and I took it out to the trash, and I put it in there, and I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And uh, the smoke was just billowing. I don't know. Well, my dad was, you know, he wasn't pleased, but he figured it really taught me a lesson. And that put an end to my experimenting with um, rocket fuel and gunpowder. Thanks for watching.